Hello, good afternoon. I am Harshi Dhara from um, University of Cambridge. I'm a PhD student in Ajit Panikar's lab, which is the Asset Management Research Group. I am working with the NGCDI project on uh, the Impact Accelerator 2. And um, in, in today's presentation, I'm going to show the, the work that we have been doing um, in that aspect. So particularly, we are looking at prediction, predicting failures in the random access network of 4G base stations. I'm working in this regard with Arjun and Henry from, uh, from BT. And uh, the end goal is to predict failures in the base stations using the alarms data. Essentially, it, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just go through the presentation and explain as it goes. So the, this is the overall summary of the problem. As you can see, between the, between the stages, when an asset is commissioned and the asset is scrapped, it goes through steady deterioration. And, uh, and uh, it, it is in an industry's benefit that it plans maintenance activities such that the, the, fail, the asset failures are mitigated. And as such, they are able to optimize the resource cost in terms of spare parts and human labor. Um, now, in, in, the, in the phase where asset is going through steady deterioration, it is in fact possible to predict the assets, asset, the, predict the assets failure um, using the data which has been acquired from, uh, from its history. So essentially, um, we are, so essentially this data corresponds to in general to anything like uh, human notes or sensor, sensor measurements or, or um, the system generated uh, alarms. In our case, it is the system generated alarms. Mm, this slide shows the, the schematic diagram of the asset that we are targeting. So as you can see on the left, uh, this is, sorry. So as you can see on the left, this is, this is basically the topology of the network that we are targeting. Um, it, is, it is such that the, the, the 4G network type that we are targeting is highlighted in the box and the alarms that we are working with are extracted from the network element manager. Uh, in theory, the alarms can belong to one of the four categories which is warnings, minor, major, and critical. Uh, so uh, from, from what we know, the critical alarms actually correspond to the failures. And the goal is to use the, the minor alarms or warnings or alarms which, which do not correspond to failure to, in order to predict the failure alarms. Uh, just, to, just to give you an introduction, the, the base stations are shown on the right. So these are the assets that we are targeting. We, we have a fleet of more than 500 uh, RAN base stations, uh, as in uh, the, the base stations from which we have acquired the data. Uh, furthermore, I have given a brief preview of how the data looks. So on the right is a list of all the critical alarms that we are targeting, and on the left uh, is a plot which shows the alarms occurring in sequence. So in y-axis, you have base station ID, uh, this is anonymized base station ID, and on the x-axis you have a snapshot of time series on which the the alarms were occurred. So day since first first alarm, as in first alarm in that time in that time window. Uh, as you can see, if you put it, if you uh, so it's okay. And also I must add that I have shown the minor alarms in blue and the major alarms in red. So if you look closely, we have combinations of alarms that occur together. For example. In the base station ID 19, we have a particular combination of alarms occurring together. And uh, in base station ID 8, we have another combination and so on. So the, the, the idea here that we are using for prognosis is that given a set of, uh, is, is to identify the functional dependencies within the alarms. So for a, for a given set of alarms, you, you, you have to predict what other alarms are expected. That, that can occur together with what, with what we have already seen. And uh, to, to formalize this, we are using an algorithm called the market basket analysis. Uh, I have shown a very simple and schematic view of this algorithm in this slide. So for example, we have an alarm set like it is shown in the top left side. And we have observed combinations of alarm seen on the top right. And based on these observed combinations of alarms, we can make a set of rules as it is shown in bottom left 
uh, of the alarms that occur together. So here we have a comp like top three alarm sets that occur together, and it's it's very easy to uh, cross check uh, just with eyeball analysis with uh, uh, with, with the observed combinations. And I, I must add here that we are not looking at the temporal aspect of it. So I, I will get back to this, but right now we are just looking at alarm combinations. And this is a schematic representation of the market basket analysis. Uh, so basically we are trying to evaluate the joint probability and the conditional probability. So the joint probability tells us that out of given set of alarms, what is the probability that a particular combination occurs? And the conditional probability tells us that given a particular combination, what is the next alarm that is probable? So like here, um, if you have a new alarm in shape of a box, then the most likely following prediction is a circle and then a pi. And for a circle, the most likely next prediction is a pi and a triangle. So this slide shows the mathematical representation of the market basket analysis and the various metrics that we use to predict the alarms. For example, support is the joint probability given that two alarms occur together. Confidence is the probability that a new alarm would occur given a set, al a set of alarms that we have already seen. And lift is a measure of evaluation of the performance of the algorithm. Uh, and, and these, these metrics will uh, become more clear as we move forward. So for example, we have a list of antecedent alarms and then we have a list of consequence which follow that uh, which follow those alarms. And then we have metrics of support, confidence, and lift for each of these rows. So the way it works is that we have a moving window in time. And if at time t, at, at the current time step, if you look at the previous three, uh, uh, at the, the previous time window, and we see which alarms occurred in the, in the previous time window, and match them in the antecedent column, then uh, the consequence give us the possibility of the next of the following alarms with a given support confidence and lift. For example, if the antecedents were both type configuration mismatch and, uh, uh, and the, so in the, in the previous time window, we have seen the alarm of both type and configuration mismatch. So in the antecedents column, this, this corresponds to the two rows highlighted and we can conclude that the consequent alarms are the rat conflict alarm or the PMU. But as we move forward in time, we see that the we we see that PMU alarm has occurred. So now the next consequent is rat conflict. And as you can see, compared to the previous case, sorry. As you can see, compared to the previous case, where the confidence of rat conflict alarm was 0 0.89, 0 0.9, it has now increased to 0.98. This is because it's previously the likelihood of uh, rat conflict was just based on both type and configuration mismatch, but now we have PMU, which has increased the likelihood of this alarm. Uh, this slide shows an example. Uh, uh, this is a demonstration of how uh, this this algorithm works with a simulated base station. So we are simulating the base station with real data set um, and, and we are simulating for a span of 100 days. So the way it works is that we, we go through the list of alarms um, and the algorithm does not know what is going to follow. So uh, as you can see, the dark gray window is the window that looks at the antecedent alarms and the light gray window looks at the consequence. Um, and, and below is an example of, uh, of kind of a dashboard, which, which gives you like the antecedent alarm and the consequent with the corresponding urgency. We're calculating urgency by scaling, scaling up the lift from, uh, between, between zero and 10. So an urgency of anything more than two is, uh, can be considered as something to be looked into. Uh, here, uh, I have paused the simulation to just give you an example of how it works. So at this particular time window, as you can see, the antecedents have been bored in wrong slot and rat conflict. And there are three possible consequences. As in the next in the next time window, we see that one of the consequent alarms has, has occurred, which means that the algorithm is working. Uh, and then the list of con and the list of consequence have been updated again. This example is from another such base station 
where we where again we are uh, monitoring the alarms but this is for a shorter time shorter time series but in this case as well as you can see the antecedents uh, and the consequence keep updating as we acquire more data set um so in summary we have uh, out of the fleet we have acquired an accuracy of 100% in four base stations which means that the the alarms that were predicted uh, actually corresponded to the alarms that actually happened uh, and uh, the overall average accuracy of more than 70% was achieved across the entire time, uh, entire test data set um, and this was this accuracy was calculated for alarms which were predicted with an urgency of at least 3 in future research we, we are trying to in incorporate the temporal nature of alarm sequences uh, for example right now we don't know uh, so so right now the, the market basket analysis just, just looks at the sets of alarms but it does not incorporate the the time difference between the alarms that happen and also the alarms can be happening uh in in any order and the algorithm would not be able to tell the difference between that so for example in the in the second point like it's shown the left hand side and the right hand side are uh, have different order but in the current state of the algorithm these both both of these would be considered to be the same by the algorithm so the future research involves um uh, incorporating incorporating the temporal nature and also incorporating the ordered uh, ordered alarm sets and of course uh, one of the major research uh, future research steps we are looking into is to uh, is to upload this into actual bt systems so again um, move further more there is another aspect that we are looking into right now which is of collaborative learning and this is particularly important for base stations in their early time steps uh, and especially and especially because these base stations have not acquired enough data by their own so it is in their benefit that they identify other similar base stations in the fleet and learn from them for example you might you might see a set of alarm that you have never seen before uh, and if if you if you come across such alarm it is difficult to predict what happens next but in this case uh, we are looking to identify clusters of similar base stations and form a hierarchical structure uh, like it is like it is shown here so a hierarchical model is characterized by the lower level distributions whose parameters are sampled from higher level distributions so the higher level distributions give the operator an overall general view of the fleet but as you go down the multi level uh, model it, it narrows down to a particular base station behavior so this is something which we are still in the process of exploring uh this was all from my side thanks a lot for listening and um, yeah i am i'm happy to collaborate with with any particular um, area of prognosis so please feel free to email me thank you